Hello and welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Now, you may remember we recently teamed up with andycine.com to review their brilliant Ymaxit 7-inch LCD touchscreen display, compatible with popular devices and dev boards such as Raspberry Pi. Well, today we're back and looking at the larger 10-inch version of their popular LCD touchscreen. And if it's anything like the previous model, then I'm really looking forward to this review. So I'm sure many of you will remember the 7-inch Ymaxit display from Andy Cine from the previous review we did. Well, as I said in the intro, today we've got the 10-inch. And um, yeah, it's quite a bit bigger. So let's take a look inside. We've got another one of the Andy Cine cloths. We've got the sort of card thing. Let's take this piece of protective foam out. And we've got the back of the main display. Look at the size of this. This is up there with laptop type displays. Just lift that out and have a look. Wow, look at that. See me again. There we are. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's looking good. A little bit of weight to it, this one, as you can probably expect. Just, just take that out for a minute. Uh, we take this piece of cardboard out. We've got the USB and HDMI cables. And we also have speakers, the adapters, all the screw pins, etc., all in this bag here. So one thing you will need, and you need to provide this yourself, is of course a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to put this Raspberry Pi 4B onto the unit. We're also going to need an operating system, micro SD card. Uh, in this case, I'm using the new 64-bit variant of Raspbian Linux, or Raspberry Pi OS as it's known now. But before we continue, it is advisable after you have flashed a fresh OS to make a couple of configuration changes over on a PC, Mac, or Linux desktop. And that's what we're going to do right now. So if we look here on Amazon at the listing, which you can find in the description to the video, and if we scroll down, you'll find here it gives you some options for the config.txt file. Um, these are needed to make the thing run in the optimum standard for Raspbian. You don't have to use these standards if you don't want to, but it is advised. So we'll select and we'll just copy those straight out of the web browser. And I've inserted the SD card here onto a Mac. This will work, by the way, on PC or Linux, perfectly fine as well. And we want to find config.txt. And you need to open that in WordPad, uh, Notepad, TextEdit, whatever your system uses as standards. Here we are, config.txt. And we'll just put these settings in the bottom. Yep, that looks fine. So we can just leave those in there and that will be absolutely fine. So don't forget to save, and then you can safely eject your SD card from your system. Right, so with that done, I would advise actually installing the SD card now. So we'll pop that into the Pi 4. So first thing to do is remove all of the little film pieces that are on top of the screw holes clearly see where a Raspberry Pi would go but it won't go straight away from memory no so it needs some risers which are in here okay so they're on like so we can now place the Raspberry Pi with the HDMI ports facing upwards so all in the same way so basically you don't want to be putting it that way around it's that way it goes and then you're provided with these little screws and we have a screwdriver so we can fix the pie board on. 
So now we can turn our attention to the interface parts to make this board interface with the screen. So we just turn around, that's a strange angle like that, and we look at the packet of Raspberry Pi 4B parts. We should have a USB and a HDMI, and this will fit. into the Raspberry Pi like so that connects the HDMI feed and if we want to use the touchscreen interface and also if we want to put power through from the Raspberry Pi through to the main board itself we need to attach the USB and um, that is done like that while we're here let's look at the speakers and here they are now what I found from last time is it's sometimes a better idea to plug the speakers in before you stick them down. And again, they are completely optional. Once you're happy the speakers are actually in, you can take the self-adhesive pads off the back and you can then just place them into the air spaces marked on the air silk screen on the back of the uh, PCB here. So here are the acrylic cut legs and they sit kind of like that and there's a long screw that goes for a hole here okay so that's the unit assembled I'll take this away for a minute And there is a film here to peel off. It says, please peel off for use. There we go. And you're probably getting a nice shiny image of me at the moment. <laughs> Not a lot we can do about that, unfortunately. There we are, we're ready. So I've got me a Rusty Pi 4 power supply here, that's USB-C. Let's plug that into the Raspberry Pi itself. There we go. And let's power up and see actually what happens. Okay, so I've turned the lights down a little bit, hopefully to help uh, reduce the reflections. So let's power up and uh, let's see what happens. That's a good sign. And I can hear some audio through actually. Ah, that's also a good sign, got a flashing cursor. It's going to uh, resize the uh, boot partition. Okay, I might just bring the volume down a little bit. By the way, the volume's on a rocker just on the side here. And there we have quite a large resolution Raspbian desktop. And you know what? It works. It actually works really, really well. I can drag windows around. It's full touch display. Um, and that's just worked out the box. I've not had to install any drivers. I've not had to configure anything. I've literally configured nothing other than put the required settings into the config.txt file and that's actually worked really really well of course the ymaxit 10 inch display isn't just for raspberry pi it is compatible with some other pi boards that use the same uh, footprint or pcb layout as raspberry pi but it'll also work quite happily as a hdmi display for any kind of device that will actually support it including game consoles now what i've got here is one of these was on mini consoles. These things were extremely popular about five years ago. And this will just sort of illustrate the point of being a games console. So you could use a full Xbox or PlayStation with this, no problem at all. Just needs to be HDMI compatible. Now, in order to rig the monitor to work, what we need to do is we need to use the other two cables. And we need to power up the monitor separately. So we'll use the USB here. 
and we can go into just any kind of uh, five volts uh, power supply. So for example, I could use a, a phone charger or something that I've got here. Here's an iPhone charger. So we'll just plug one end into there and put that into the power. And on the side of the unit, you've got, there's two USB plugs here. One is for external touch screen and one here is power. I've also got a headphone jack, which is just down here. And you might notice the full size HDMI there. So we can use the HDMI lead and we'll plug that in there. There we go. The other end we'll plug into our device or video game system. Now we'll just get some power for that. Okay, so let's power on the monitor again. And you see it comes up just on its own. And it should say no signal. There we are. So we put some power. There we go. And as you can see, that actually works really, really well. So you could even use this in a sort of modern games cabinet if you wanted. Because it supports its own sound, it's yeah, it'd be really, really flexible for that. Oh dear. So there we have it, the Ymaxit 10 inch LCD touchscreen. As you have seen, a really useful and versatile unit capable of working with all sorts of devices. Personally, I'll be using this and the smaller 7 inch version for exhibitions and events where I don't want to be carrying around larger desktop style monitors or have to walk in content in boxes or backpacks. And that's happened to me on a number of occasions recently. All the details, including links to Amazon, are in the description to this video. And please remember, prices may vary from those illustrated in this video. If you're interested in seeing more product reviews from myself here on Wi-Fi Sheet, then do check out our review and unboxing playlist. And remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I hope to see you real soon, right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.